It's Rima Afternoons and talking once again with Carl Tinian, uh, the Anglican rejuvenator and, of course, the guy behind Heavenly Not. And today talking, well, all food for thoughts. And which thought are we having today, Carl? Welcome. Hi, yeah. Um, well, I I run this, uh, I'm connected to a health and wellbeing centre through our church mm. and I run monthly cookery workshops. And this Friday we're running a Turkish cookery workshop and um, part of it, I was doing some history uh, in the in, in the, the word kebab, and uh, it's absolutely fascinating. And I thought, ah, oh, well, perhaps today we could talk about kebab as a metaphor for the universal church. Okay. Oh, oh okay. Well, let, well, before we go there, can we actually talk about what we're talking about with kebabs? You know, you were saying you were doing some research and some history. You know, what are we talking about here culinary-wise first? Well, it was. I just wanted to just talk talk about, uh, you know, for my for my class, I wanted to just talk about, well, where does this word come from? Who invented it? And it seems it's pretty complicated and it goes right back. It can go back as, as early as the ninth century and probably it would go back earlier than that, but it's kind of Persia, um, Arabia, all the way around that sort of area. Um, and the word kebab is Persian, um, but it means roasted or fried. So it's describing the action of what you've done to, to a piece of meat. Um, and uh, the Turks uh, uh, modernized that concept and it's they used it kind of the same word kebab. Um, and you have shish kebab, you have uh, that's on a skewer, and you have doner kebab, uh, and all of those words uh, describe the function of how it's cooked. So a doner kebab is it means slowly rotating, mm. rotating, roasting. Shish kebab is more interesting. It it, it it's describing the 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 um the the skewer that the meat goes on and historically it was it was on on a sword so the bedouin or um wow. traveling soldiers would skewer some meat on their sword and just stick it on the fire i mean it makes perfect sense um so like the history goes back and back and back and back uh, and i just thought ah oh, that's really cool and and also so persia the turks say it's theirs you have it in syria you have it in in the middle all over the middle east in egypt um, India uh, adopted it. You might see in a in a restaurant Sikh kebab. Um, you have kofta kebabs, uh, which is another v- variant. Um, the Indians got it via Persia. Uh, the Turks popularized it uh, again throughout Europe. Um, I found one website that, where the Germans say that that they own the the shish kebab, and it's like, yeah, it's hilarious how everyone felt like culturally they had a corner on that truth Mm -hmm. and i thought oh that's beautiful really it's a bit like the church in the sense that the church is a universal term what what do you mean what denomination what style what type um what cultural expression and everyone feels like they've got their own corner on that um uh but and, and they all got their own sort of tweaks and differences and different spices that they might add to it that make it theirs and and make it indigenous if you like and I think, oh, that's so beautiful that God is, I, I guess Jesus didn't give us a, a very, very strong blueprint for the church, but allowed for that cultural embrace and breadth mm. of of expression. And, and so it's kind of unity with diversity. And I guess we're practicing that for heaven, aren't we? Mm. Mm. Now, scripturally, uh, you know, were there any verses that came to mind where you were, when you were delving into this oneness, this idea of oneness uh, and kebabs in the church? Well, I I love the the version, uh, the the scripture in Revelation. We've talked about it before, mm. where where we where every tribe and nation and language come to the the mountain of God, and you know it's that kind of universal dimension of we are we we're, we're diverse with our unity, but we don't lose our our cultural differences when we come into heaven. Even um, everyone brings their language and their art and their food. And God's not requiring a homogenous church. He, he seems to love variety. Um, I quite like that. I was also looking at Ephesians 3 that talks about through God, this mystery uh, that he seeks to reveal the, the church um, reveals the manifold wisdom of God to, throughout the, the world through across nations and, and even heavenly principalities that God's wisdom and his truth is made known through the church and the breadth of the church. Mm. And I love that. I want to be part of a multicultural, multi-ethnic 
you know vibrant church it's beautiful and a bit like kebabs i like lots of different kebabs and i wouldn't want a homogenous kebab i like lots of different spices they're great in india they're great in 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 jordan they're amazing in turkey and um praise the lord for variety i say mm. All right. Well, having said that, Carl, just as we come to an end and, you know, just coming back to the fact that you were saying there are so many variations on kebabs, where would you go to with kebab preparation? What are you thinking as you get ready for your Turkish dinner and uh, maybe something we could bear in mind if we were, I don't know, uh, you know, making the most of hopefully some warmer weather? Oh, that's that's dangerous because I could really geek out. But I'm, <laughs> I, I, I'll give you. I will. We'll use the same spice mix, and I give you two meat variants. Okay, so I, we'll we'll say lamb. Lamb is a bit expensive, so in some cultures they'll have a third lamb and two thirds beef. It's completely up to you. You can use chicken as well, but if you think about keeping the spices not too complicated, a lot of cultures will actually puree an onion and add a bit of water to it and they'll use that as a tenderizer um, and just marinate the meat in a kind of an onion water mm. which is pretty clever but if you add some cumin to that um, just a good pinch of cumin and some salt um, a bit of lemon juice uh, and just marinate your meat for ideally a couple of hours overnight's better um, and then you're you're skewering it. Stick it on a skewer. You can do it on a wooden skewer, uh, but soak that uh, in water beforehand or try and find some metal ones. And um, you're looking to slowly roast it over, I think, charcoal. In an ideal universe, kebab is much better on charcoal. So do a proper meal and get some charcoal. It tastes better. You don't want it on naked flames. You want it on charcoal heat. Um, again, you could do it on your gas one if you want. Uh, but you, yeah, you're trying to slowly cook it. You're not trying to burn it real quick. So it's this beautiful kind of slow roast uh, over the heat. Um, and you can either use pieces of meat that are chunks that you've marinated and then skewered, or you can actually just buy some beef mints or lamb mints and, and mix the whole lot together by hand. Um, put in some chili flakes if you want, and then form them with your hands onto the metal skewer. That's a cheaper option. And it's equally good. You know, and that's the kind of the basis of kofta. Um, and uh, yeah, so mm. experiment away. Don't worry too much about the ingredients. You could just do some onion and, and salt and it would taste absolutely amazing. Mm. So yeah, be free. All right. Feeling well, hungry already. Food for thought <laughs> for a Friday, right? <laughs> yeah. And I guess, look, if you've just tuned in, talking about kebabs, uh, kebabs, and you, as you said, turning up in history and all sorts of different cultures and all sorts of variations and talking about the church being made up of all sorts of uh, cultures and people of every nation, tribe and tongue, and Ephesians 3.10, so that through the church, the manifold wisdom, uh, manifold wisdom of God might be made known to the rulers and author authorities in the heavenly places this was according to the eternal purpose that he realized in christ jesus our lord and of course jesus the head of his church the head of oh, his man. body oh, all right yeah. carl thank you so again you. check out heavenly nosh on youtube appreciate it all right take care thanks for joining us on rima now if you found value in today's content hit that like button and if you haven't already consider subscribing to our channel with the subscribe button this really helps us to continue to produce more quality content for you and hey if you'd like to stay updated and never miss any of our future videos ring that notification bell as well don't forget to follow us on our other socials which are in the description below and until then, stay tuned.